Good evening and ahoy. This is the news. Premiering next January will be True Detective Night Country, the fourth installment of the True Detective series. Mm. But this will be the first one that will feature two female leads and be helmed by a female showrunner. When asked why the change, producers said they really just wanted people to stop talking about how bad the second season was. Wow, and it was, it was really bad. It was. It was a really bad season. This one's probably going to be the, be worse. Yeah, it's probably going to be. <laughs> Over the weekend, Courtney Kardashian uh, from Star Trek and Travis Barker welcomed their first baby into the world. It was very nice. Sources say the baby boy is happy and healthy, but just give it a few years. Brendan Fraser's role as a lawyer in the new film Killers of the Flower Moon has been criticized by some who think that his performance was over the top. Mm -hmm. This is his first role since his Oscar-winning performance as a depressed, antisocial, 600-pound gay man, which critics found much more relatable. (laughs) They liked it. (laughs) Like, I know that guy. (laughs) He's me. (laughs) Alec Baldwin said uh, he and his family are considering starring in a reality show. Baldwin told reporters it'll uh, be me, my wife, seven children, a nanny, a maid, and blood on my hands. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Normal World. I'm Dave Landau. I'm Quarter Black Garrett. And with us always is the beautiful and talented... Oh. Thank you. Angela. Oh, I thought you were going to say my Almost <laughs> switched it. I know, I know. That's what I did. I was going to go. Nah. And they know. But today's uh. special guest, uh, he's a writer, performer, comedian, one of my good friends. He's written on probably every single show that actually gets laughs for sitcoms. <laughs> so he, uh, I guess you haven't been writing on shows yeah, for a lately. while. I have not. <laughs> I, I have not. The last one I think was the Kevin James video. Right. Yeah, it was yeah. A, it was on, on Netflix. And yeah. then uh, the lockdowns happened. Then we came back. We came back in the middle. No one else was allowed to go to work. It was it was Amazon, people at grocery stores, and those sitcom dudes. Essential. Yeah. yeah. Totally essential workers. That's we were in spacesuits filming a sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm home. It was awesome. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. How, how have you been? I've I've been very well. It's it's great, and we I'm glad to be you. here. Congratulations on this. This Thank is fantastic, you. by the way, dude. It's great, and it was great after doing your show that that show tonight, where you do your sketch show as well. Yes. That show tonight still going strong. People need to go to that show tonight and check that out. Uh, sketch comedy live oh, yeah. studio audience, a bunch of New Yorkers. Uh, so it's great. I was on almost in like March. some other show. I can't think what of the show? name. I forget the name. It used to be <laughs> used to be really good. And then Uh, 1978 (laughs) happened. (laughs) And it's been Uh, waffling ever since. Yeah. Then, well, then the 90s were good in there. A little bit of an uptick. Yeah. yeah, It went right down. I I forget the show. Mad TV. I love Mad TV. That was my my jam. I like that more than SNL. They had some funny stuff on there too. But it was like it was weird. It's like, um, like Mad TV didn't know what it wanted to be. No. Mm. Was it like all pre tape Yeah, yeah, Was yeah. It a, a studio audience? They kind of did like a hybrid thing, which I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes it was it was swing and a miss. It would change almost every season. Yeah. A completely different style. And, yeah. yeah. All the pre tape stuff, too, that I found to be fun and irreverent, like a lot of the sketches they didn't put out. One was with Callan and Artie Lang, and it was just Schindler's Lost. <laughs> And they showed it to, I, I guess, Spielberg, and they're like, "So you think this is okay?" And he's like, "No. <laughs> why would Why would that be okay?" And they never played it. And then finally, they found the video and they played it. And it's really just, it's ridiculous. But it's yeah. just Schindler can't save anybody because his driver's lost. <laughs> It's funny. It's funny, but yeah, Spielberg's like, no, the, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, who has some the, humor about it. Jeez, who was the cast while. lady who did that, like, uh, like incredibly over the top Chinese lady? Oh, oh yeah. she's uh, great. Uh, well, she's the on uh, yeah, Family she's really Guy great. as well. She plays Lois. Yeah, she Alex plays Lois Borstein? on Family Guy. Yeah, uh, Alex Borstein. As, Alex Borstein. Yes. So there was like no blowback for that. No, not, not back in the day. Zero no. blowback <laughs> for that, I which think, I'm fine with. I think just like the guy who did Apu on The Simpsons. Is well, like that guy canceled himself, right? 
He came out and was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then he quit. Did, is he, like, what happened to that character? Well, Hank Azaria? Just, yeah. Did they just get rid of that character altogether? No, they still, I no, I, yeah, I just, watched a recent Simpsons and they still have the character. There's just somebody else voicing him. You probably so noticed why you weren't it's laughing. It's still racist, supposedly, <laughs> yeah. right? So. Or is it a totally different voice? <laughs> Welcome to the Quickie Mart. Yes. I am you a boo. That. <laughs> that would have been funny. Well, that's what I don't get is like Hank Azaria is known for making all these great voices and he's always been funny that way. And it's like, I just, I don't want to do it. But I hate when you take a stand after you've made a billion dollars. Yes. This show's been on since 1989. Mm -hmm. And in 2021, you're like, look. I don't, know if y'all, I don't know if you guys noticed, but they. I was reading an article about the fact that like Homer no longer strangles Bart. Yes. I saw that. I saw that too. <laughs> They've quietly the gotten that out because we live in a different time now. You can't strangle your kids as if you could before. <laughs> it is. Uh, I was. I was fortunate enough to. I. I, I wrote on a show, uh, and one of the, one of the other writers was Sam Simon, uh, the the creator of The Simpsons. Yeah. And, one time, you know, we're taking a break from the writer's room and we're outside. He's having a cigar and I'm having a smoke. And uh, I forget what year they were celebrating on The Simpsons. And I'm like, dude, it's like mm. it's like year 20. <laughs> like, I'm like, they got to be done. They got to be out of stories. And he looked at me like deadly serious. He goes, there's thousands of more stories. Thousands. Like he... That dude was crazy talented, but the one thing was like that that Homer was just like a high functioning retard. Like yes, he, he can't spell the word cup anymore. He's dumb. It's just <laughs> that was the problem though. Is he Homer when it started was genuinely like a good dad who was intelligent, loved his wife, yeah. and met at times like he was he was dimwitted. But then they just made him into Peter from Family Guy and took all his heart away. Yeah, they're they're chasing yeah. that. And the one writer of The Simpsons, Wade, told me to read some of his books, and I can't think of his name, but he writes all these mysteries. And I, Yeah, yeah, I remember that. He he would go to L.A., and he would sit in this booth and smoke and write Simpsons scripts. And then one day they stopped smoking, and he's like, well, I'd like to buy the booth then, please. So he just sits in his house, and he writes these books. (laughs) And and they're brilliant books. They're hilarious. But yeah, he's. But you can tell that like his influence is no longer on the show. I believe he passed away, but it's yeah. It's a shame because once you see, I don't know, like I, that show came out when I was seven. Okay. So I adored it. I watched everything. I watched the premiere. I watched it for the first 12 years religiously. Mm-hmm. But then it just like, now when you see Bart with an iPhone or something, it just turns me off. But South Park does it right because they're mocking. I was going to say that. I was going to yeah. say that with, with a show that has the longevity of South Park, they're still on the edge of pop culture and culture and they know how to satirize it perfectly like with into the pandaverse, pandaverse. or join the pandaverse is what they called it mm-hmm. it was so on the nose with it but like in the perfect way with the pandaverse with disney i feel like they could have gone even harder with disney but that's yeah just me uh but it, then the beeline story was all about ai taking over jobs from smart people that went to college and they were all mad about it so it was like even the the B line story was just as good as the A line yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. Those guys are having just the. You can tell they're having a blast when they're doing it. It's weird how it kind of it, it you it's conveyed through the screen. Yeah, like you can almost hear them laughing in their office. <laughs> yeah, <And that's, laughs> their jokes. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the best, man. Well, that's why I loved it. it. Was a bunch of people standing outside of Home Depot, and they're like, "I'll be a lawyer." <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was so brilliant. Don't you guys clear like, out? You're making this place look yeah. cheaty. Yeah, they're like, yeah, that's what I love. You're making it look cheaty, and making it's just it look like, cheaty. <laughs> and it's the guy who pulls up who's now a billionaire yeah. because he's the only person who can still fix a toilet. <laughs> and that's it made great. It made they have such, a space race. Uh, it's so good. Oh yeah, so they good. made such a good point where it's like, yeah, like anybody who just didn't go to college and figured out how to turn a screw was fine. <laughs> He's standing in the oven's broken. I'm working on it. <laughs> He's just calling a handyman. <laughs> They're like, How, who puts together the catapult to launch into the college and they have to pay a guy twenty thousand dollars to That's do it? That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah, they just do it right. It'll be it'll be interesting to see if there's any repercussions at Disney from the 
join the pander from that yeah i've heard that they're like really everybody and their mother has called out kathleen kennedy everybody and their mother has called out disney and like the snow white debacle yeah. which did they cancel that movie no it's still going. something happened with it, it though there is something that happened with it i don't know if it's canceled well, it's been or delayed because of the, the writer's strike and the actor strike and i think they got rid of the diversity stuff. dwarves i don't think that's the case i think there was a friend of mine ryan cannell uh ryan kennell either way you want to say it uh, actually did a, a a video on it where there in the story there was always going to be another group of seven people and they were like a different group and they were going to be other people so I think I think that rumor is incorrect okay but uh, oh yeah okay. the the, C, the CGI that they have in that film is just horrendous I'm yeah. looking at it right now and I think that you're right about the diversity dwarves oh yeah like yeah the, the band of they've like, made CGI dwarves which is also just taking away more jobs from from the little people. That was all Peter Dinklage. Yeah. Dinklage. That was all Dinklage. Yeah, Dinklage was, yeah. It's like you were saying. It's like once you've made your money, then you get up he's on out. your high horse. Mm -hmm. It's like, you I know? got my Game of Thrones money. I'm out. Yeah, he's right? like, yeah. It's like, look, I, or or he'll come in and go, well, I want this role because it's the good one. I guess so. <laughs> I believe Elf I will too. be I, I want to play Elf on the shelf. I, <laughs> I believe I have the best chops for that. And it's not because I'm a midget, no. Uh, no, no, no. It's because I'm, I'm an actor. I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah, he's a... Uh, I mean, I like him enough, but it's it's it, with it too yeah. though. It's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and that's Snow White and the Seven whatever the hell's, and also some men. <laughs> Occupy like, Wall yeah. Street. <laughs> if, it was, if it was just yeah, Snow White and the yeah, Seven the Antifas. It's not just seven guys who are like come come over to our house. You'd be like, I'm gonna stay in the woods. No, come to our house. I'm just gonna go keep. <laughs> Let me kiss my... you while you sleep. Yeah, no, no, it'll wake you up. I'm not a. I, I can get up myself. No, no, let me try it. You, oh, wait, you bite this wait. apple. Take a bite of this apple. Eat it. Eat the apple. That's a poison apple. We got. You, we <laughs> have this. We have this banana. We want you to eat. <laughs> it's poison. All of us at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I liked how though they did go at Kathleen Kennedy though by Cartman just going, I <laughs> make it black and make it gay. <laughs> Put a chicken it, make it lame and gay. Yeah, I mean lame and gay. They're like, sir, how do you serve linguine with it lame and gay? And he's like. Put a chick in it, <laughs> make it lame, make it gay. <laughs> but that's what they've been doing. It's so funny that, too because I saw articles going like, "This is you know that they this is very strange that they that they would say this. They've been doing it to every single franchise, Disney specifically, yeah. has put a chick in it, made her lame and gay." And it's wild, trend. and it's like uh, they're all strangely like versions of Kathleen Kennedy. Yes, they are. It's like she's living out her little fantasy world. Yeah. They're all me self as a Jedi. That's me being the next Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. Well, and she worked originally for uh, the guy who wrote Dirty Harry, who was the one who John Miles my, uh, Millis uh, Milius Milius. Yeah, who they based Walter on in The Big Lebowski. Wow. So I'm like, you oh, couldn't right. possibly have two different people. Like, that's how she got into show business, was working for Walter from the Big wow. House. And then she wor worked for Steven Spielberg. Because of that connection through John. John, yeah. yeah. And then people think, oh, Kathleen, well, I, I am guilty when they gave it over to Kathleen. I was like, hey, she's got the chops. Look, yes. her name's under all these really great movies. Yeah. None of them were actually her, because when she was on her own. We see everything else she did. That's that's what you quickly find out. Because like, there was a, a, a big thing on Twitter, which sadly I was a part of. Uh, but they were like, oh, so you don't like Jurassic Park? The Black Square. You, she don't like Jurassic no. Park? And I'm like, huh, I think there was somebody else who was working on that movie with her. Let me think. Oh, Steven Spielberg. Maybe. Right. <laughs> I think he might have had a vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Th that movie, too, the CGI is still better than what anybody's come up with. Right? Since 1992. I saw the, the most heartbreaking documentary about Jurassic Park. This guy who'd worked for Industrial Light and Magic and was like the best stop motion animation Phil guy. Phil Tippett. You know that you say, so you know what I'm about to I say. Know, yeah. So he's doing all these like camera shots. He's, he's setting up all these shots and showing them, oh, here's how we'll do the dinosaurs. And he's being so meticulous. Meanwhile, these two dudes in Industrial Light and Magic Art is like burning the midnight oil. They're like, oh, we'll do this on a computer. And they're making the computer models and nobody else knows about it. And then Kathleen Kennedy comes in for a tour of Industrial Light and Magic. And they're like, check this out. And they press play. And her jaw hits the fucking floor because it looks like real dinosaurs. And this Wait. poor dude has been working his tail off just making these minute movements. No, don't need it. Oh, Thanks, yeah. buddy. 
Phil is Tippett, the, a legend. Did... He did the Ad At Walkers and Oh yeah, Fire. yeah. Did he, he did do a lot Mad of great God stuff. recently? Yes, it was fantastic. It yeah, is so it. good. Yeah. That was a and passion insane. project. Yeah, that's what I love when I saw the, all the movies that he was responsible for, and then Mad God. Have you seen it? I have not. It's Pl- wild. Go on Shutter, watch <laughs> Mad God, and then call me after you forgive me. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a movie he worked on for like. 20 or 30 yeah. years. Wow. He's over amazing. over the decades. It's just his passion project he worked on and released it. It's a stop motion animation holocaust psychotic yeah, monster it's movie. Wild. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah, I don't know how else to put it. It's really it's it's art on every level and it's great. And it's called Mad God? Mad yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. Dude's yeah. a legend. Dude is a legend. Yeah, it's it's a great movie. Now, yeah. To his credit, like the saving graces, they knew he had set up all the camera shots for all the big special effects scenes. So when they did computerize it, they used his, some of his work is still on the screen in Jurassic Park. Yeah, he's a, a stop motion animator, so he he was animating the movements of the dinosaurs and all that stuff. And they ended up making like uh, I don't know the technical term for it, but basically receivers that they could connect to his stop motion. And they could track that into the computer. Oh wow! And make and use some of that as the animation for the animated that's awesome. CGI at dinosaurs. Yeah, it's yeah, really cool. And that's what's so great about that. When you say Jurassic Park does way better CGI than most movies now. Sorry, my nose is still congested. Uh, is fine. that movie I had diarrhea for six days? <laughs> I'm pooping right now. Right now? Wow! <laughs> right now. That movie did a, a a blend of both. It did practical when it needed practical, like the giant. T-Rex head coming down into the Jeep. That's stuff that you need a practical for. You, it, you get the action. Yeah. And the, the actors can see it. They have real fear. And then for the big wide shots, they can use the CGI. It could be a little further away. You don't have to do as much detail. The problem now is in movies, they overwork the CGI departments. Yep. Like to the point, like specifically Disney, they're in a lawsuit with the departments and I think the departments are starting to unionize because they're they're going, okay, do this shot. Then they'll do the shot. And then a month before the movie premieres, they're like, oh, well, we, could, we had to f- change it. It's going to be completely different. And then they're like, you have this much time, but you're yeah. not going to get paid more. So then they have to like burn the midnight oil and work overtime and do all this stuff. And then, uh, then you have bad shots. And that's why it seems like the CGI in Marvel movies Sometimes it's great, but sometimes it's really, really bad. Yeah. And you're like, why? This is like $250 million movie. That's why. Because the production of it yeah. is bad. And the way they've planned it out is not very that, good. So that, that thing that you made that took you eight months. Right, you trash it. Getting rid of it. You had out of eight hours to do it, but exactly. it's Iron Man and he's wearing a Batman costume. Right. Well, and that's why, like in <laughs> Jurassic Park, when they walk out and they see the field of like stegosauruses, it's this majestic shot. There's do good music the like you've never seen. Yeah. You just see it's so freaky. It's like you, yeah. you just see Sam Elliott and Laura Dern's uh, Eastern Island head. <laughs> And like they're just looking out at it. Oh, wow, just a shot at Laura Dern for no reason. Yeah, yeah. What did she do? Yeah, you just cut to her. Of just like it's like we don't. We, that sort of ruins the the majestic part of this scene. It's like, did you, why don't you consider hiring a woman? Put a chicken so, in it, make it live. <laughs> make it live again. It's true. They move in herds. <laughs> you know who a sexier female lead would have been? Bruce Dern. <laughs> Like, but yeah, that whole scene was like top. majestic. But then when you had the scene, he still had that Jaws tear where you had the, the you know, the glass moving. Yeah. yeah. Or like the hiding in the kitchen and like stuff's going on, but it's blurred out. But you just see pans being thrown yeah. and you know that it's like these, uh, what were those? Uh, Ladle? Were they raptors? Raptors, yeah. The raptors. Yeah, yeah. Lots of raptors. Like, and you kind of see them blurred out. You don't need to see it. Like, they don't need to look amazing because you're just terrified while <laughs> the yes. main shot is just how scared they are. Like, Steven Spielberg created suspense in a way that had never been done because of the failure of the robot in Jaws. Yeah. yeah. That's the most, that's the best accident to ever happen to cinema is having that thing be a total piece of crap. Yeah. Right. That was amazing to have to do that kind of work around and just imply with that music. The shark is here. You know the shark. It's just freaking brilliant. Yeah, it's so well, good. I think it was Steven Soderbergh, Soderbergh did a visual essay about uh, Steven Spielberg. And really? he, took, he took Raiders of the Lost Ark, 
the first one. So uh, good. And he just made it, he took out all the dialogue, all the music, had it in black and white, and just selectively, just like, how he moves the camera and mm-hmm. frames up the shots, and it's just, like... The opening of that scene is the greatest character introduction, I think, of all time for Indiana Jones. It's slow. It's show, It never shows his face until the reveal. You see his his two assistants that are there. Yeah. You see the landscape, kind of the jungle, and then that slow silhouette shot with the jungle in the background where he walks into frame, lights up, and it's Indiana Jones. It's like such a great opening It's a film. I'm going to watch uh, Mad God, but watch you guys it. have to find this. I think it was, yeah, let's that, say it's see Soderbergh that. who did this like visual essay just about how Spielberg frames up the, his shots. It's it's wonderful. You, it's very rare to see that kind no, of thought sure, yeah. put into composition of shots these days. It, now it just seems to be get the shot to get the shot. Yes. But sometimes, like even you, you, you take uh, Avengers, a movie that's in the MCU, just... 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, some of those shots are co- composed very thoughtfully with, I mean, you're thinking, it's from a comic book, so you're you're taking the medium of comic books, which is all com- composition, all action shots, and and making that into a film. And like, that's what you were saying, like, with Steven Spielberg, you're talking about filmmaking. Yes. You just oh, don't yeah. see anymore. Yeah. You don't see the thought of like, we're... Do we want to have this shot a little lower to emphasize power to the other character? Do we want this to be center frame? Do we want it to be off frame? That you just don't see that. Yeah, anymore. it's, it's just shot to get the shot. And I think that's why uh, uh, Oppenheimer. One of the mm-hmm. reasons that, that 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 one really struck a chord recently is because like that's a dude. I love I love movies where you could just freeze it and go, yeah, put a frame on that shit. Yes, that is yeah. art. I could hang. Dune. Yeah. Dune. Did you watch Dune? Oh, that my great. lord. Criminal. And I actually was one of the few that liked the David Lynch Dune because I like David Lynch. Oh, yeah. I like that yeah. Too, yeah. But the new Dune, I was blown away. Yes. It was just awesome. And as a guy who's read those books and loved it, and it was like, I've just been repeatedly disappointed, disappointed, disappointed. It's yeah. like being asked out to the same bar. You know, it was like, no, last time I was there, it was just horrible. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. I, no, I, I, no, they've redone it. Finally, uh, Villeneuve just crushed it. And done right. Just yes, done, it was. Uh, that was really his. That whole character that that he it was just perfect. Turns out I didn't know this, but Frank Herbert and George Lucas were buds. Really? I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. And they that. were yeah, and that's they were both talking about projects that they wanted to do, and so you got like Luke Skywalker dro- growing up on a yeah. desert planet, and Paul Atreides. Paul, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah. And the I Sand People. <laughs> they take off those. They Holy have, crap. They're beautiful. And they have blue eyes. <laughs> it's Zendaya <Yeah>. under there. <laughs> I'll show you my sandworm. Oh, you <laughs> Speaking of sandworms. You know where I like to keep it? Oh. Inside my Undertack boxers. Me too. I'm going to tell you right now, guys. They're good. Oh, yeah, dude. They're so good. <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. They're soft. I actually am. They're cuddling. Show see. us my undertack. Show oh. us your undertack. Pull it, pull it, pull it. I think I'm gonna prove I'm wearing it, and Angela will tell you. I didn't even know we were doing this as a sponsor today. He had no clue. That's uh, I've, I'm telling you, legit. Yeah. I've thrown out all of my underwear, <laughs> and I'm getting only undertack, and it's not because yeah. they're the sponsors, because they're freaking really great. Yeah. Show it. Undertack. 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 I can see it. It's undertack. Undertack. I like the green ones better than the recons. The recons are, are a little tight. I think it's just because I'm fat. I do because I eat a lot of green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they're they're <laughs> the very they're blended. silky. <laughs> very silky. Yeah. I think if I was like doing some uh, working um, out, recons would be the way to go though. But I love these honestly. They're a great product. They're sturdy. They're comfortable. They're mm-hmm. moisture wicking. They're good with bacteria. And I don't mean like they, they're good to them and they can hang out. <laughs> no, they, nice they get time. them out, man. They get them out. They're like, bacteria, we don't need you. Like a, it's like a bacteria genocide down there. They're water resistant. You know how once you hit a certain age, mm-hmm. you go, hey, my urethra is just going to drip for 18 minutes after I pee. Yeah. Doesn't least, matter how much you shake it. At least that's if you're me. <laughs> so after you had a, yeah, yeah, say you're at a ball game, you're uh-huh. sitting there and you just put whatever food you got over your lap until those pee spots dry. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that with Undertack. It's a nice thick layer and it's whisking it back towards your leg. So, <laughs> and down. 
Yep, right no, down. I'm, I'm sponsored personally by that manscaper, so if it's cool, I'm going to just take off my pants. Oh, oh. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a full vagina, and we're like, what the hell? What is it's this? a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's in the shape of a microphone. Yeah, it's just a, yeah. <laughs> It's just a full landing it's strip from land. here. <laughs> I'm not even offended. It's really good. I mean, how it's, it's not even patchy. <laughs> I'm not even offended. It's like shaving a bear. I uh, so anyway, they donate a lot of their portions also to human trafficking, and that's to stopping it. Yes, and that's an important part because if it was to you know funding it, I w- I would say right. that was bad. I would think about it. I'm like, These are You'd still like, comfortable. Listen. These are really good. I mean, they're like, still no. they're still comfy. I don't know if they're traffic comfy, but yeah, they're yeah. It's a line. I I think about it. But underattack.com, go there. Get twenty percent off site wide. Honestly, it's a great product. Garrett and I are being dead serious. Legit. Yeah. Use code normal twenty. And go there, underattack.com. That's under T A C dot com. So it's under <laughs> <tech.com>. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Sorry. Normal 20. <laughs> Seriously, try it. You're going to like it. They're a great company. They're good people. And you're getting a high quality product that you're going to be able to wash. The colors don't fade. Trust me, but the right colors do go away. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That was good. That's perfect. That was a good one. Thank you. I think we need to talk about bees. 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 This is important because um, a tractor trailer, and of course, this is in no way funny. No, this is serious. Uh, this is horrible. Uh, yeah, Death Valley National. Uh, Death Valley National officials said a tractor trailer hauling bees rolled over a Sunday morning. Uh, the tractor trailer. Tra- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're in a bee uh, epidemic, man. They're going away. We need them for the and apparently this this ecosystem. poor person was hauling beehives, which is in no way hilarious. The tractor trailer driver was removed from the truck uh, with help of passerbys. The people who got stung by bees in the process, of course. We actually have exclusive footage of the recovery efforts. Forget that. I'm starting to swell up. Save yourself. Don't be the hero. I don't think that was right. Actually. It's not though. That's not. That's the wrong I'm sorry. I think I pulled up the wrong one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I pulled up uh, the wrong one. I got yeah, the right one. I got the right the one. Okay. Well, what is that? What is that? What is it? Oh no! Not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Out of my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Now that is actually pretty close to what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for Nick Cage. He used to be a big movie star. Now he's a truck driver. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know, he does he's what he wants to do. Well, you make Wicker, man. He does what he loves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny, though? It's like, I kind of wonder, not that it's, you know, it's tragic, but how it happened. Like, the guy's driving a cab full of beehives. Like, first you get there, it's like, what am I hauling? And it's like, bees. You know, the thing everybody hates and stings you? And you're like, yeah. how many? You're like, millions. <laughs> Just... <laughs> And then you're driving out, like, does one get in the cab and you're, like, shooing it? And then you get in a horrible <laughs> accident. That's That could be very well be, because that's what I want to know is, like, why did he wreck? Why did he wreck? Yeah. But that could very well be it. I think a bee got out and then he was probably trying to swat the bee. This is just all theory. Yeah, yeah. Flipped his truck and then I bet when he came to, he was like, oh, I'm alive. Oh, right, there's there's millions of bees. <laughs> It's like a naked and gun. Flight of the Bumblebee starts playing. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. I, Tragic. Oh, I think I'm okay. Ow, 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 oh. ow. Oh right, there's bees. <laughs> there's no water by. It's not You're even in like, Death Valley. Ten minutes later, it's like he can't see without his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Where are his glasses? That's why he flipped the truck. <laughs> but can oh, you imagine? A lot of movies with bees. I'm a good Samaritan, I would say. And if I passed by and saw the yeah, bees, sorry, I'd bro. Be like, <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I'm not going to help you. Well, yeah, that's that's the horrible part. People stopped, and they started walking over, and they are and they're like, no, those are bees. They go back to their car. <laughs> yeah, you're like, help me! And they're like, yeah, no, it's just crawling across the road. <laughs> no! You're like, well, why do you have, what are you, a, are you an evil scientist? Like, why do you? Why are you carrying that many bees across Death Valley? Well, we're running out of bees. Well, it <laughs> seems like you wish that they had already. <laughs> How's that working out for you? 
Oh, well. Ah, uh, the poor guy. But he's all right. He survived, yeah? Yeah, he survived. Uh, yeah, and right now he's he's actually driving a uh, a, a crate of Wolverines to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and if, like, if he doesn't get superpowers out of this, that's horseshit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, he's super... got to be like B-Man now. Yeah, yes. what would B-Man do? He would sting and die shortly after. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot little, little horns out of his ass. But then die. He, he just makes die. really good honey. <laughs> you eat it and you're like, this is divine. It's the best honey of it. It's like, yeah, well, it's superpower honey. <laughs> Don't call me super for nothing. I peed yeah. that this morning. Yeah. Can you say <laughs> <laughs> his pee's is very thick? Oh. His, do- ah! his doctor is talking to him, like holding the cup, like, yeah, I, I don't think there's a problem. <laughs> no toxins in here. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I know. He, he was, was wearing really- Undertack, though. Let honey get whisked right away. Yeah, the whole his whole genital region due to his under attack boxers. Whisker saved. man. Saved. No stings. <laughs> saved. Uh his face, however, is a this uh is lumpy. <laughs> Just horrifically. He has one of those old timey like white <laughs> ties on it. <laughs> like spanky. <Yeah. laughs> like, like what they do for a toothache. Oh, <laughs> I w- just, just elephant man yeah, bumps. swollen up. I was driving the bee. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm a human I, being. Bee. I don't want to drive bees anymore. <laughs> what do you want to drive? I just, the stuff. Uh, okay, lobsters. He wants lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be hauling these tarantulas. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I think he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in the truck. I can imagine. That's just, uh, I wouldn't say yes to it. I'd be like, so these are it's very odd thing. hives filled with bees? And they're like, oh, yeah. And you're like, I, I didn't what say What if hives. there's hazard it pay? It just said that. bees. There's got to be hazard you gotta pay. Got to get more money. I'm thinking there's hazard pay. And I'm also thinking there should be some sort of pay after your truck flips and you're stung by <laughs> thousands of bees. <laughs> Some kind of insurance Some, yeah, B pay. clause. Should, should you gotta in. think like too when cops show up to stop them, they're like, "Oh man, I wish this was just a bunch of looters." <laughs> <laughs> why, why couldn't this be looting? Yeah, why couldn't this just be a BLM riot? I'd have a better chance. Ah, <laughs> uh. <laughs> I can't viciously beat these into the ground. I can't. I can't lean on this bee's neck. Funny, yeah. There's just uh, all of a sudden a court case because they feel that they used uh, what is it, excessive force? Yeah, <laughs> bees. There's just like, three look at the, bees. Look at the bullet footage. Bullet. We can see the foot, the body cam. He's holding the wings. The He's bee was the wings. clearly flying, and I you can't just, breathe. Yeah, I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't have a whole bee court I like in the bee movie. Z- <laughs> uh, and I hope the bees are okay because yeah. we do need the bees. We do. We, we found do. that out recently. Yeah. yeah, if if you can't buy a a bear of honey and keep it in your cabinet for the next decade, we're fucked. Yeah, yeah. The more you know, the Do more you, sound you know. Effect for that, you know. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Biden. Yeah, you like him. Big fan. Yeah, great guy. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I think spry. He, yeah, He's cognitive. His game. Yes, yeah. sharp. Good father. Sharp as sharp attack. Man. Good father, yeah. 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 Yeah, family He's a role model. Yeah. Good with money. Great with money. Yeah. Good good at, you know, killing his kid. <laughs> Biden is spending a, a $16 billion, I don't know if that's true, if he killed Bo, but he probably gave him oh, his address. Yeah. Biden is spending $16 billion to make the Amtrak faster. <laughs> 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 Drain's got to go faster. Because apparently he That'll thinks, fix it. Hey, guys, I... I I th- I, liked, I, saw, I was watching Polar Express, and I thought it could go to the North Pole. I look at Tom Hanks' face, and I said, it can go faster than that. Uh, I believe we have a video of, uh, of him addressing it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Biden and Amtrak. Mm-hmm. This is why we need another gillion, jillion dollars for the war in McCrane. Nope, 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 nope. Here's Mark Sneakers Ball. Snake, Sneakers, Mark, Bianco. You want to see a bird? Bellagio. Snickle Tap. I'm just happy that happened. Our leaders are a joke, man. Did you see the, the video of King Charles banning cigarettes? Did he really? He bans. So anyone that's 
born in 2009 can no longer purchase cigarettes in the future. So they're just like, so can't, only can't buy people cigarettes. older than who that died yeah. made him. It's like <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna get like grandfathered in, so they can still smoke, but not anybody after that. Yeah, you know all the problems that we have in America and all the problems they have in the UK, they're gonna get solved. Where do you have a right have to have the adults that? running the show now? It's uh, that's one of the things that I really can't stand about big government uh, when they save you from yourself. Mm -hmm. Like stop! I like I wear a seatbelt in the car. I do that just because, like, if something happens, I, I don't want to be in the hospital for as long. But when they started going, oh, if you're on a motorcycle, you have to wear a helmet. If you're in the car, you have to wear a seatbelt. Like, why? That. Why? That just, it, it drives me bonkers. And, like, this thing with Prince Charles, like, oh, no. Now, after a lifetime of smoking and enjoying myself, you no one else can smoke cigarettes. Yeah. I'm yeah. doing that for, because I know best, damn it. Now, please. I'm the king. Look at my silly head. Taking the iffy Can shot. <laughs> Does we care about the value of your life? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We've come from years and years of the same relatives. Have you looked at the relatives in the royal family? Not the outside. Like, there's more. There's like more that are still reading, alive. Right? Like paintings over the years. Like, and you Google what the like they yeah. pee blue. They're all like I'm not kidding. Like they're all so inbred where it's not hemophiliacs. Yeah, they're Jack just bleed. people that live in the mountains but happen to have gold yeah. and <laughs> it had to have been like the best Royal Appalachian scam family ever. Yeah. When somebody invented it, whenever somebody is like, no, seriously, I've I'm I'm the chosen one. I'm gonna be in charge of everything. Everybody just give me money, yeah. make sure I'm okay, I'm gonna be in that castle. The whole family is like, I got it. I need a I need a piece of this. Yeah, yeah. I get a okay. You don't oh, do it here. Do it over there and freaking uh in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how they have kings. And they're like, what does a king entail? You're like, I, I sit on a real big chair with gold. I'm the chosen yeah. one. I got a cool hat. Yeah. Yeah. God chose me. <laughs> yeah. I like large tables where there's a pig with an apple in its mouth yeah. and fruit and no one else can eat it but me. It all just goes bad. Yeah. I get big, big houses. We're yeah. going to have a celebration on my birthday that shall last for a hundred days. Yes. <laughs> It's like my sweet 16, but even more spoiled and stupid. <laughs> I like how your king sounds like Bill Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be more spoiled and stupid. Now, when yeah. you celebrate the king and you, get the <laughs> <laughs> and you have the jello pudding pop, don't fall asleep in the throne room. No, you don't want to do that. And then the woman... <laughs> And the woman that I want there to be the king. Oh, you're gonna come get back. super sleepy after that. Oh, and I say give the girls some wine, and then it's gonna be Cosby King time. Mm. <laughs> That's his cousin. He's talking. I'm gonna go from room to room and be your groom. <laughs> 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 Somebody's playing a fiddle, but it's like the Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just dancing. Kill me. Hey, it's the king. Honestly, that'd be a As king. the king of Prussia, <laughs> I have an announcement. <laughs> Pudding pops will be served to the populace. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna, if I get in trouble, I'm gonna go to jail, pretend to be blind, you see, and then four months later, I'm gonna dance out and look at the cameras so they're reminded I'm a monster. Uh, Where, where's my scepter? Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's wonderful. You know the things you learn on this show. They talk a lot about the History Channel. They don't talk enough about normal world. Yeah, we're they don't. informative. We are informative. What we do is we dive deep. Almost two words past the headline. That's right. Yes. yes. That's right. Almost. We're Almost. about <laughs> as informative as a History Channel past midnight. Yes. That's which true. is just Bigfoot hunting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> aliens and ghosts. Bigfoot <laughs> naked. Bigfoot aliens and ghosts in normal world. Yeah. I used to fall for the Bigfoot shows. On like yeah, the right, History Channel, I used to like like I enjoy like them. these guys are out there looking for Bigfoot, and I'm like, oh well, they shit, are. I wonder what happened. This, this well, episode, they're, like, they're gonna find him. They are. You think like if they would have found him, it, it, it would have made the papers. Well, they're oh, waiting for this episode to come out. I've ah. had people show me their phones. Of I've talked about this on the <laughs> yeah. show, where a guys like, no, I've seen Big Feet, and I was like, <laughs> plural. 
feet, big feet. <laughs> and he's like, this one's a junior. And it was like this <laughs> thing was like clearly in a costume eating out of a bait pile. And I'm like, so you put a bait pile of apples and they just come to it? He's like, that's right. <laughs> and I'm like, um, this is the clearest picture you can get from four feet away behind your truck. <laughs> I know the trail cams out there. I was making fun of one of those shows, and this entire table one night, like 10 years ago, was dying laughing. So I'm like, you know what I never see on those shows? Bigfoot. But there's <laughs> so many episodes. And so everybody's laughing and pointing at this guy who's apparently like, and he goes, listen, man, they just found one in Canada, and they're going to drive it down to Las Vegas. And I'm going to go there, and I'm going to check its authenticity. And then immediately I was just riffing on the fact that this guy had to go through customs. It's like, what do you have in your car? I don't know. I got some toilet paper. Uh, I got myself uh, a bag of protein bars. Oh, and fucking Bigfoot. Wanna, <laughs> you want to see it? He's dead in the back. Do I got to buy an extra ticket for a cryptid? Yeah, he ain't alive. Yeah. He's not a uh, human. It'd be funny if he got it. But I was like, why Vegas? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You're like, well, we yeah. wanted to show the corpse of Bigfoot a real good time. We found Bigfoot in Canada. You going to take him to Quebec? No, no. No, no, no. Vegas. Vegas. Because he wants to do some gambling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking him to the chicken ranch. It's just, <laughs> just like a, it's basically a so, remake of Rain Man. Ooh. All of a sudden, Bigfoot's counting cards. You're wearing matching boxes going down an escalator. brilliant. <laughs> Urgh, Bigfoot always split eights. Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot double down. <laughs> Roll on black. No, you got Bigfoot it. not hit 18. Dealer show 16. Yeah. <laughs> Dealer must hit. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, no, you got to hit. You got to hit. You got to hit. Now if Why I found I Bigfoot, Bigfoot, I'm taking him right to Vegas. That's We're on going. 18. We can't. Go, you, no, you want to hit. You got to want to hit. All right, Bigfoot. And then he hits. And you're like, 21. Damn. Ah, wow, man. Autistic Bigfoot is the best thing I've ever brought <laughs> to Vegas. Bigfoot in Vegas. Why are we not making that show? That should be, Why yeah. are we not? Like that should a be a Rain movie. Man Bigfoot. Rain Make Man Bigfoot. <laughs> Rain Foot. <laughs> Normal World Productions. Bigfoot in Vegas. Speaking of autistic Rain Men. Rain Foot. Rain Foot. <laughs> rain Foot. <laughs> Big Rain. <laughs> We, we seriously need to make this guy. Yes, oh my God. I think I know the perfect guy. Oh my God. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we might have him as a writer. On yeah. The show. Coming <laughs> down the escalator, it's you and a shoe. Yeah. It's just me and Bigfoot. <laughs> definitely Wapner. Definitely. definitely. I want to I wanna watch Wapner. I didn't, don't want to watch Wapner. I, I, we're not watching it. It's Bigfoot. not even a thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been in the woods, right in the woods. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. That's great. I do love that movie, too, in hindsight, where it's like Tom Cruise wants to inherit all of his dad's money, so he takes his autistic brother card count. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like, you're rooting for tale. him. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, I hope he wins. <laughs> like, is like, wait a second. Script. This is really dark. It's clearly not garbage. <laughs> when he's taking his autistic brother out of a home to win cash to then in turn get all of his father's money. Oh, man. <laughs> the heartwarming tale. Yes. Dustin Hoffman, Tom Cruise, and this guy's kind of a dick. Should yeah, we change the title? I do want to talk about, um, real quick, uh, we had something here. Mm. Ah, tea. Tea? Tea. Tea. What do we have about tea? tea? <laughs> well, we're on TikTok now, and we had a TikTok yeah. video. Oh, do we? Uh, yeah, we should show it, where apparently working with a forklift uh, can be very, very scary for some people. Mm. We, we, That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. You doing good. Come down. Come down. Just keep coming down. Oh, oh, wait, I'm in the way. All right, come down. 
I'm begging you. Somebody come. <laughs> come down. You gotta come down. I can't. The machine's not moving. We in the Man, way. I don't know how to work the machine. You need to go down. Please, please, somebody, please, somebody. Please. Okay, I'm going down. Kelly. Hold it easy, okay? Hold on, Kelly. Let's we'll see if you can find. That's how to switch. Or is that? You know who's ever buying he... that product though is selfishly like I'm not taking that one. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Quit. Give me the one in the back. <laughs> he actually. I did. want the one behind that one. But forklifts can be scary. Yes. And we learned this uh, the other day. Glenn needed some non-alcoholic tea. Okay. And we had our own autistic Bigfoot uh, bring him. <laughs> okay, we need you to bring this non-alcoholic tea to Glenn Beck right away. He told us he's very thirsty. You got it. Oh my God! Good it was, Lord! It's, this is too heavy. It's not that it's heavy. Too heavy. It's not. I, I worked out already today. I worked a failure. Good Lord! Why did you do this you're, to me? You're going I'm down. You're fine. Contract. You're, you're fine. What? What? <laughs> you made it. Empathy. Indeed. Yes, and Indeed. actually, our show today is sponsored by Untwisted Tea, which is actually where they siphoned out all of the alcohol. As you can see, it's zero oh. percent alcohol, and it's only double the price. So, it's not Untwisted bad. Tea, Glenn yes. Beck's favorite, also known as Wisted Tea, oh. which it used to be Wistful Tea. It did, where you would just look at it and be like, "That'd be great." Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically uh, accurate. But now you can. <laughs> Untwisted Tea. I saw that uh, that TikTok of the kid freaking out on the forklift. Yeah, yeah, and that just uh, that makes me sad for America right there. It does because that's just I think that's just your average dude now. Yeah, you know they just lows though. Don't shop at Lowe's. Shop at Home Depot. Right, you're yeah. a Home Depot guy. Yeah, but I used to do. Lowe's full of those people. I did industrial <laughs> paintings in warehouses for my uncle for years. Like when we would do like giant like Kroger's and warehouses, and I'd yeah. be on scaffolding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was basically just like, you know, another guy who was probably doing heroin the night before showing up to push me. <laughs> and I was never like, oh, no, ah. these are powerful. It was like, ah. that's how you make money. Like, dude, yeah. the guy's guarded by a cage. Yeah, Nothing's you're not going, going to happen to you. He's not even that high. Like, I, I used to change out ceiling tiles in a movie theater. Yeah. Like, super high up, like three, four stories. You're in the scat. It's it's made for that. That is, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah. Come right back down. And it was the weight of the box in the box, and he was high up. He's like five feet off the ground. Like I can't move the machine. What's up? Like, can now you imagine that kid on the front lines of World War Three? Yeah, we're screwed. Oh. You mean right. we're screwed, bro? <laughs> you mean laying there with his head blown open? <laughs> and the you know, right so after he was like, "Look, guys, it wasn't how heavy it was. It was just awkward. It was awkward." <laughs> yeah. It was like wobbly up there yeah. when you get on the yes. Forklift. Like it was like, awkward. What a pussy you were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know those guys were just like, I could get you down, but I'm not gonna get you. Right. Down. I'm just gonna keep taping this shit, and I'm yeah. gonna put it on TikTok. That's the problem. Is if I'm working there, I'm just gonna start hitting the up button. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, I'm sorry. This whole thing's I don't know malfunctioning. What's going on. I don't know what's happening. I don't know how to work this thing. I was eating a stick of butter, and it fell right in there. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> This crazy machine has a mind of its own. Uh, we're going to leave. We're just going to leave you there safely with a box and a cage, but you're going to freak out for the next half hour. All right, time to lock up. Yeah, See you who tomorrow, turned Tommy. The lights. <laughs> uh, I, I, I weep for the future. Yeah. Mm. These are not the toughest. Uh, yeah. No, not sending their best. Nothing remotely as tough as we used to churn out. Like those guys who, who fought in World War II. Yeah. Good mm. Lord. Yeah, but the, they used to hit us all the time. And by us, I mean women. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but I mean... Children, so. <laughs> but I mean, think of how in line you were. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. you, do, you do what you're told. Right? The first time. I mean, there's... Uh, you should never hit a woman, but I mean, at the time... Unless you should have. back. <laughs> You don't want her acting all goofy, and there weren't medications for when her periods got awful. Yeah. <laughs> so all you had was a belt and a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> you sent him off to the sanitarium for a while. Now yeah. listen, she. Where I don't want to do it, but we haven't invented my doll yet. Yes. So now I got to belt you. Yeah. I got to sock you right in the puss. <laughs> 
No, you're right. That is something where they were like, <laughs> yeah, like go after the insane asylum, okay? For a while, you're getting a little loony. And at the insane asylum, you know that they would uh, get them with a what oh. is called a Chattanooga what the heck machine. It was basically like, a, oh, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking? About? It's like a vibrator on a yeah. sewing machine pedal. And yeah. they were like, we're gonna get those crazies right out of you, and they would just give them an orgasm, and they felt better. Yes, so, so that's how you know, women work. They that's figured how, it out in the yeah. past. That's how the vibrator. Just, that's how the vibrator was invented. Yeah. It was yeah. yes. Women, yeah. In an insane asylum, going mm, yes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Some guy who was just had horrible leg cramps from doing that pedal all day long, yes. <laughs> keeping that thing going. <laughs> they used to do it with their feet. We got to invent a machine. They used to do it by hand. The doctors. Did. Yeah. No, I I always thought it was machine. I'm sure. It was no, and then they made the machine because they were like, "Oh, my fingers are cramping." My, my fingers yes. Yeah. Are so They're like, "This is the worst. I would have stayed home." I, uh, skipping leg day. I don't have to uh, work. <laughs> you have to think though. Doing that, they were probably looking at it, going, "They seem to be enjoying this more than all that uh, electricity we've been running into their heads every time they have a period." They like this. They don't like getting lobotomized. I don't Why know. is this? All right, Mrs. Mrs. Smith. So what will it be today? Yes. Would you like the shock treatment on your head or the orgasm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, orgasm again. There you go. I see. So your vagina's bleeding. Well, again, that is the devil's work. <laughs> so I guess for the next five days, you'll be getting hit in the head with. 25 volts a day. And, and then, then we might we might scoop out ahead of the a little bit of the frontal cortex there. <laughs> and take away a big hunk of your personality. <laughs> sure you don't want the orgasm? <laughs> okay, your choice. As long as you leave with the smile and ability to cook, Gene, you're ready to go out into the world. Your face might be frozen on the left-hand side for a while. Can you still serve drinks? Why do women hate men? We don't know. <laughs> we can't figure it out. It's a malfunction. Yeah, meanwhile, the doctor's just sitting there smoking. <laughs> <laughs> right into her face. Yeah, these are Paul Malls. They have a much smoother pool. Oh, yeah. It's good for my throat. <laughs> Nine out of ten doctors of advice. Yes, they <laughs> recommend these. <laughs> I love yeah, those the old commercials. Mm -hmm. Weird. They're my favorite. Ah, Camels. That's what you need, young Billy. <laughs> the old Folgers commercials are great too. Oh, the coffee! Your coffee is terrible. Yeah, it's, it's weird how. Like, <laughs> I think that the future of television is going to look like olden days television, because like on Andy Griffith on that, and you can still see him on YouTube. They have him. Uh, the scene would continue on, like Andy and Barney would be talking about the problem with with Opie in the kitchen, and then they'd go out to the front porch to have a cigarette. You know, what are you smoking, Andy? Oh, I'm having a lucky strike, Barn. Oh, I hear those are good. They would just incorporate it into the show. Yeah. Product placement. Yeah. As opposed to just having uh, Jack Parr standing there and going, welcome to the cigarette comedy hour. <laughs> and like, he would be like, whatever, behind him. <laughs> be like, ah, welcome. It's the Jack Parr lead paint comedy hour. Feature. <laughs> <laughs> Colloidal silver. Enjoy. <laughs> Brought to you by Mercury Drinking Oils. <laughs> <laughs> Mercury Drinking Oils. It's what Grandma would have wanted. Radium That's watches. Right. <laughs> they glow in the dark. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to dig your old coal lung. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down to the dig your own coal bungalow. Yes. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> the bungalows, that is. Do we have an, an end of the world? We don't. Oh. You don't have an end of the world? Then I'm going to just ask one be, anyway. What would be your end of the world choice? Just, hmm. Let's get meta about this. You know what? I'm going to just ask something. We're all going to have to answer oh, it. Okay. okay. So before I bring you to the end of the world, we are going to have to do some plugs. Mike, where can we see you? Where can we find you? November 10th and 11th, I am at the Bricktown Comedy Club in Oklahoma City. Great room. Pretty excited about that. And then people should go check out that show tonight. At thatshowtonight.com. A wonderful, wonderful live sketch show event. I have been a guest, and if you go to my Instagram, you can see some of the sketches that Mike and I have actually We're done wonderful together. wonderful on that show. Dude, I loved it. It was such a blast. Yes, that was a good time. Uh, this, uh, this, no, yeah, what day is it? What? November 10th and 11th. Uh, I will be at the Funny Bone in Liberty township ohio that's kind of right outside of cincinnati and then i'll be at the comedy cove in springsfield new jersey november 17th and 18th and then catch me at the improv in tampa november 24th and 25th and real quick i did want to announce sorry i don't mean to take them all but uh this is a benefit for a young boy who's on his last legs uh with an inoperable tumor it'll be at the clinton inn uh in clinton michigan uh the first week of weekend of december uh come out if you can 
You can go to my website for information. 100% of the proceeds go to the family. The kid had an issue with his eye, brought into to the eye doctor. They said he should go to the hospital. He's not leaving the hospital. Ooh. It's a friend of ours. And uh, so please, if you can come out, all that money is going to go to them. Obviously, it's not going to give them what they they need, but it's something that we can do to just help alleviate the what the family has to go through. So please check that out, DaveLandau.com. It's tragic. So what uh, are you doing that's you can, heroic? <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Friday Night Tights on the Nerdrotic channel and also watch any of the videos on Nerdrotic channel because I edit a lot of those. And uh, Forbidden Frontier on Sundays on the Nerdrotic channel as well where we talk about Bigfoot. Nice. Ooh. We don't talk about Bigfoot that much. Here he's going to Vegas. It's mostly aliens and uh, ancient apocalypse stuff. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's fun. It's good stuff. It's wonderful it's stuff. By the way, also please like and subscribe this yeah. channel. Pretty please. I will send you feet pics, but they won't be mine. They will be stock image feet pics. So. Oh, don't tell them that. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't tell them that. You well, keep the that. illusion. I'll cut, I'll cut that part out. I'll put some feet pics up there for okay. you. Okay. There we go. Yeah, Real my feet. channel, The Loftus Party. Go check that out too. Lots of comedy there. There's so much comedy. We abound. Yeah. Comedy. You don't even know what to do with all this so comedy. Much. I'll send feet pics. There's a lot of band aids and a toe missing. <laughs> <laughs> that frostbite? Yep. I got corns. Gotcha. I can get you, you a toe. <laughs> 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 Just send them out for real. And they're like, what? Why would you? How do you walk? <laughs> I'm <mainly Yeah>. loose. <laughs> I limp. I'm going to ask you this because of the way we started the show. Okay. What is. Uh, of the era of the 70s, I would say. I, let's just go Spielberg. Okay. What's your favorite Spielberg movie and why? It's difficult. But I think Besides I'm going to say... The new Indiana Jones. My favorite. She, Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah, that's so good. My favorite movie of Steven Spielberg's movies would have to be Indiana Jones. Lost... Uh, not Lost. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Amen. I got you. Because, uh, yeah, it's such a great character intro, like I said... The shots are amazing. Like the shot when he's digging, uh, when they find the chamber, that the sun going down on that shot, it's all silhouetted. Just beautiful camera work. It's a great story. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Angela. Right the, Lost the color purple. That's a great oh, movie, I like too. That. That's a great one. Good pull. That's really great. Can't believe they're remaking that. Are they really? Yeah. yeah. Who are they? Who's the? Who's I have the, no idea. Oprah. But like, of all the movies, I'm sorry. You should go on about your your love of this movie. It's just to me, it's heartbreaking. It's like, oh, that Steven Spielberg movie. We should remake that. Yeah, let's. <laughs> yeah. I think he's involved. I think he's like a I hope executive so. producer yeah. or something. Yeah, but like let's one up that. <laughs> right, it'll work. What's your, what's your favorite scene from uh, Color Purple? I don't know. No, just all of it. You just <laughs> all of it. The color. The yeah. bees. <laughs> the bees. <laughs> you talking about the color purple when <laughs> it's a different, totally different movie. <laughs> Where they find a body that's been stung. <laughs> I think in the movie, the color blue. No, it's different. What a <laughs> Honestly, I was going back and forth between Hook and that, but Hook is freaking great too. It's too good. I don't care what people say. Hook is a great movie. Great to watch yeah. what, what do people say? We, we can't end rank. They, they say it's like juvenile and kid. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's freaking a, Peter Pan. Yeah. What, what are you expecting? Not Peter Pan to the last ten minutes. Hoffman is it's great. False advertising. Get out of here. Should, it should have been Hook. That's, Wait, what, that's yeah. what it was called. It was called Hook. Okay, there. We're good. Oh, good. <laughs> Move on. We're all set then. I'm sorry. I thought it was called Peter Pan. <laughs> thought we were going to have a moment. We're okay. We're okay. Is the theater angry? No, it was called yeah. Hook. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. These oh, last 25 oh. years, I've been in a... I found a quite about good this then. movie. Bob Hoskins Still. is always enjoyable. Oh, he's so great. <laughs> Bob Hoskins. That's right. He was in that yeah, too. Oh, dude, I great. love him, man. And uh, who was uh, Tinkerbell in that one? Uh, that was Roberts. Roberts. Yeah. Roberts, yeah. That's a that's a good Tinkerbell right there. That, especially at that's great. Yeah. A good that's firm tinker, that's right prime. out of Tinkerbell. Right out yeah. of pretty why woman. You just, why don't you just wear that costume home? <laughs> Julia? Yeah, just, it's fine. Come on. Come, come Treat, up, treat me house. down. Put me in that dollhouse. Yeah, I do love that right before that she was a hooker, but it was like her first day, and you're yeah. like, that's not how that works. Also, <laughs> anything that makes her gums smaller. That's good. true. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. That's why, Hi, but that's why they said no to Gina Davis because nothing did. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what uh, you? Me? It's it's uh, it's Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, simply because I had never seen a movie like that before. The pacing of that, 
It's like, it is, you see, people will say this all the time. Oh, that movie, it was like a roller coaster ride. That movie was legit like a roller coaster ride. And just when you think, Mm -hmm. oh, they can't top themselves, they do. And just like from an editing and storytelling standpoint, they know when to tap the brakes. Yes. You know, they, they tap the brakes, you can catch your breath, and then boom, they're coming at you again like Mike Tyson. That's insanely hard to do. And those set pieces, just incredible. And then, of course, you know, as a kid, when you see it, the, the fact that I, I guess the story is Harrison Ford had dysentery. He had horrible yeah. diarrhea. So he's like, well, how can, let's just do one where I shoot the guy. I'm telling you, man, the audience exploded in laughter. Like that was the that was a moment that just like just epic, just completely epic, and it builds the character. It builds oh, the, yeah. Indiana Jones. He's like the every man. It's like oh, I don't have to do some big thing. Yeah, Come on. I'm it was for Marion that that movie, yeah. and it's weird. I think people just and obviously now they think that there's a certain oh, it's kind of easy. No, you know, you get that. It's like a uh, airplane. Yes, the first airplane movie. Just, I had never seen anything like that before. Either. Just uh, just a Gatling gun. Yeah, just over, never joke, stop, joke, never joke, stop. joke, joke. And then somebody thought, oh, it's comedy, it's easy. So those guys, the Zucker brothers, didn't do Airplane Part 2. And it, it of course, was a turd. Uh, completely. You know? Because uh, it's well, and Doug hard Kenny do. basically didn't kill himself, but did kill himself because of how good Airplane was. Yeah. I'm sorry? Doug Kenny from uh, National Lampoon, who wrote Caddyshack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did, did Caddyshack, and he had just had that put out. Uh, I mean, Harold Ramis directed it and everything. Right. That was, or, I'm sorry, Animal House. Was it Doug Kenny? That That's he, why Doug Kenny did it? Yeah, he was. That, they, I thought it was Caddyshack. Uh, no, you're right. It was Caddyshack. Doug Kenny really? had written Caddyshack, and then Harold Ramis directed and all that. Yeah. Yeah, they basically said that he went to the theater, watched Airplane, and he was like, this is a perfect comedy. There's no way Caddyshack is going to be this. And they said just knowing his luck when he he fell in Hawaii, he was probably just looking for a place to possibly kill himself when the rocks gave out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Caddyshack is freaking legendary. It's, yes. oh, it's amazing. But I don't yeah. think it was, it, was, it was as appreciated. I mean, it was not appreciated at the time. And then it grew over time to be really loved and respected. I mean, Ted yeah. Knight and Rodney Dangerfield... They didn't even like each other because Rodney Dangerfield is this old comedian smoking. And it's great. Yeah. Really, and it's also great. not, what, at that point, 15 years back into comedy? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he Because he had restarted maybe a little longer, but, I mean, he restarted at 45. Yeah, as a yeah. second. And he yeah. quit as Jack right. Roy at, like, 24. So, I mean, he took a 20-year break. And then Ted Knight was hilarious, but he was very like, I'm by the script, I'm Mm -hmm. by the book, and everybody else is like, we're cocaine and improvisers, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So it was like that, and even if you look at the Caddyshack original script, it's a love story about Danny, that Irish girl, and then it really just turns into this completely batshit film. And even Bill Murray, who plays the groundskeeper, it's because the original groundskeeper was going to play, but they're like... No, he's got real bad PTSD. Like, this is actually not a good idea. <laughs> so then they had to bring in Bill Murray to play the groundskeeper. Like, there's just a, it, great stories about it. Oh, man. Blowing up the golf course like Dangerfield went and did. Great film. A, uh, a stand-up show to lure away the owners of the golf course <laughs> so they could then rig it with dynamite and it's hilarious. blow it up. Yeah, because they didn't know awesome. else to do it. They couldn't do it with them on property. That's all like some stuff we do. <laughs> So basically, Dangerfield's on stage just like, hey, hey all right, I'm going to do a little show. You guys, you might hear a little boom in the distance. Yeah. It's not coming from your place. All right, right hey. <laughs> my wife likes to talk after sex. She called me from a motel. And then they look up at the screens and they're like, why is there a golf course on fire? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, my wife, cooking? she can't cook. Uh, <laughs> yeah. hey, it wasn't your place anyway. <laughs> ah, made up about soup. Spilled the out. Flies help. chipped in to get the screen door fixed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, people are crying because their dreams exploding on TV because <laughs> they trusted Chevy Chase. <laughs> anyway, I the, that who was the I, no one's gonna know her name, but the girl, the, the the hot chick that wanted to bang Chevy Chase. You want to tie me up with some of your oh, ties? Uh, I did remember her name. It was like the For sexiest thing I had ever. That 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 girl was just like a 
a goddess. Oh, she was stunning, the blonde girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, and the second she's walking and they're playing the music through the pool and everybody's just doing the lower sunglasses. They all the suck in their swing. guts. Yeah, and they're all like <laughs> sucking. I like that scene because people think it's sexist, but it just shows how pathetic men are. Yeah, it's a joke like, on That men. was the whole yeah. joke on just how desperate and pathetic guys are. <laughs> people don't understand. <laughs> Um, we are running out, though. I got to say, my favorite Spielberg movie yeah, is yeah. Jaws, because my son was able Classic. to watch it because it's PG, and right. he's eight, and I didn't know how he would take it, but he watched Poltergeist. Where, loved it. And I showed him when we were in uh, Orlando. Ghost directed. Uh, yeah, where they had um, Bruce. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. One of the sharks, and I'm like, see this fake piece of garbage? Now he had to build suspense because this thing was not very good, not real, not reliable, and because of music, suspense, this ability... You know, because he was always curious how movies were made, especially after watching Poltergeist. Yeah. He, he, he liked it all, but the clown scared him. Yes. And I mean, understandably. Like, yeah. And like the real skeletons of people came out of the pool, but I mean, they're not really. The guy ripping his face out of the off. Pool, but it's still terrifying. Yeah. They're not like yeah. actually haunted. So he knew that. Yeah. So he's kind of like laughing. The clown was terrifying. The clown yeah. terrifying. Freaking scary. So yeah. like, but, but ghost then, directed by Steven Spielberg. He directed some of the scenes in Poltergeist. Oh, that's right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I keep forgetting. Got that same kind of feel. Does it, you know? I might actually have to go with half Poltergeist then, because even uh, then I showed him the videos of like how they did the clown, and my son was like, "So like this is incredible. Yeah. Like the way they just used that sort of old, uh, uh, old gimmicky." Uh, oh yeah, and I love those those very basic effects. It's all great, yeah. like those old special effects that they knew how to do, and then they were forgotten, and then the old timers brought them back, and a lot of like the George Lucas stuff, and uh, it's great. And a fun like Jaws, a phenomenal movie, Jaws, and like uh, Robert Shaw, and how they were able to get him out of the country Man. super fast. He had so he owed so many so much money in taxes that yeah. like a warrant for his <laughs> like, arrest. Get him out. Yeah, but just a brilliant job. That, that monologue. That monologue. He wrote that. So good. He wrote that. He did. Yes. Wow. They had taken different passes at it. And there was a, that was the first time one of the co-authors of the script was a sitcom guy. And every, everybody thought Spielberg was crazy. You, you hired a guy from a sitcom to help out on Jaws. But that's why you have these great little moments of, of comedy, you know, when they're... <laughs> little levity. Faces at yeah. The, and at Dreyfus the, shines in that, too. Yeah. He's yeah. great. In the, yeah, the, whole, the whole film's great. They, they couldn't get that uh, USS Indianapolis monologue right, and Robert Shaw was like, hey, let me have, a, let me have a, t a take at it. And he came back the next day, and uh, they were like, oh, wow, this is fantastic. Dude, he, spot yeah. on. Rutger Hauer wrote the, uh, the speech at the end of Blade Runner. Did he really? Yeah. Yes. The, tears in the Rain. Tears in Rain, yeah. Which I have to argue is the best part of Blade Runner. Yeah, I love that it's movie. beautiful. I love that movie. It sums up everything. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful little nonsensical Oda, like say. poem thing that kind of like makes sense at the same time. Yeah. I guess glorious. I saw um uh, uh Ridley Scott tell the story about it, and it was like he goes into Rutger Hauer's trailer, and he's like, "Okay, so we're gonna do the rooftop thing." And Rutger Hauer goes, "I've got a monologue I'd like to read," and uh, Ridley Scott's like, "Oh Christ, here we go." <laughs> yeah. And See, then he heard it, ships. and he's like. Off of the Ten Houser Gate. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is he talking? I guess we'll just roll. Just roll. Yeah, just roll. roll. He's, he's doing a thing. Yeah, like, the tears. And... <laughs> you know, At least Scott and Tony Scott are both amazing filmmakers. Yeah. Yes. R.I.P. That's also, yeah, Tony Scott, I was reading a thing too with uh, Quentin Tarantino because if you read Natural Born Killers, it's actually this really great script. It's almost a Bonnie and Clyde love story. Mm -hmm. And then when he heard what was made with it, he was like, why did you make this? <laughs> Like, that's not what I wrote. But then uh, as like far it, as, yeah. as true romance went, he was like, that's, he's like, I think that's better than I could have done. Like, mine may have been too violent. Mine, Because mm. Tony Scott left the heart in that movie. Yeah. yeah. Where even at the end when they're on the beach and everything and she's saying, you're so cool. Like, it still has this, like, sort of beautiful ending where he just wants to save Alabama. Like, it's such a cool movie the way that it, yeah. it all. That's goes. another one that goes right up there with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. True Romance, I had never seen a movie like that before. Yeah. Where it like, it broke all the rules, and I hate rule books. Yes. Like these people, and they're always trying to sell them in LA. Here's how you write a script. This has to happen by this page. This has to happen by this. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the structure. And True Romance was just like, yeah. take your structure and sit on it, Potsy. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, you're meeting a new character. There's a new problem. New character, new problem. And it just, 
Man, that movie's good. And you, well, you have Elvis played by Vel Kilmer, and yep. you don't even tell it's Vel Kilmer, right? But you have it's. There's no reason for it to exist, but it fits perfectly in the film. And then I still say that the the fight scene, as weird as it sounds, between Patricia Arquette and James Gandolfini is one of the greatest scenes ever put on film. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing when he just like opens up his shirt and he's just like, "Come on, what are you gonna do?" Like, and he just talks about it. He's like, you know, the first time you kill somebody, he's like, it hurts, it bothers you, it hurts your soul. And he's like, now I just do it to see the face, you know, this expression on their face change. <clears throat> and Gandolfini's doing it in that great, dramatic, yeah, the broad way, he way. I can remember sitting in the theater in Florida watching that movie, and Gandolfini does this little move with his yes. eyes, this little, like, he looks under the bed, and he's like, I can't believe you didn't, have to, you didn't put it under the fucking bed. She put it under the bed. But yeah. this one little move with his eyes, and I'm like, that guy's a movie star. That, dude, yeah. that's the same thought I subtle, had. The subtle it was teaser, bonkers, yeah. man. And the second I saw The Sopranos start, and I remembered him from that scene, I was like, I know this is going to work. Yes. Just because yeah. that of James Gann. I didn't even know his name, but I just knew the that hit guy. Man. Because yeah. when he, I mean, he brutalizes her in that yeah. scene. And then when she finally gets that corkscrew into his foot and just the shotgun, <laughs> you're like, dude, it's so good. Like, that's yeah. one of those movies. And, like, we always break down the scene of the, it, the just complete racism between, and not really racism, but it's just, that's why you shouldn't call it racism. But Dennis Hopper deliberately trying to mm -hmm. piss off the Christopher yeah. Walken character because he already knows he's going to die. Listen for the music cues in that one. Okay. There it's there's there's no music and he offers him the lucky strike and he turns it down and then Dennis Hopper this is all just like his internal monologue. Yeah. yeah. And once he realizes he goes uh okay I'll, I'll I'll take one of those luckies. Boom. That's when the music starts. Okay. It's, just, uh, it's beautiful. And that's why I love that scene is it's because he's he's just trying to upset I got to make him gonna, so like mad right he kills me. Yeah, and, he, <laughs> and that's what I love is he did it so well that the that the hitman doesn't kill him. Yeah. He goes, he, he kills him, and he's like, I haven't killed somebody since 1985. <laughs> that's beautiful. But anyway, not to wax fantastic on movies, but those are all day, you can check right? out. But we could do it all day. Uh, thank you again, Mike, so much thank for joining us. Thank you so much. Us. It was great. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, dude, fantastic. Please come back. And we got some sketches with Mike we shot today. They'll be coming out this week. Thank you again. Join us. Please hit like. Please subscribe. Thank Share you so it with much. your friends. We, it really means a lot to us that you guys have been supporting and our channel has been growing. Uh, I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. See you tomorrow.